everyone was saying it's the best day of their life. For me, it was just a normal day in the kitchen. <laughs> we serve the under 21s, the under 18s, um, the women's team, the under 15s today, the under 16s, and then staff. So it's, uh, yeah, it's non stop. How does a, a normal day look in terms of what the lads eat? Uh, breakfast is optional, but they pretty much all come in for breakfast. I know it's boring, but the players have exactly the same breakfast every single day. It's what they know gets them through training. Makes you know they, they don't feel full, they don't feel empty during training. And most of the time now, people just come up to you and go, "Usual chef," and I know you know as soon as they walk in the door little nod and you're making their omelette for or, or scrambled egg or whatever it may be. Um, then they go off out and train. Usually about one o'clock they have lunch. Um, and again, lunch, lunch service will run till usually about two o'clock, an hour service. So today obviously here is the main part of the day really. This is their fuel basically. So we have a pasta station. We, we literally give them whatever pasta they want. So we've got lots of different sauces. We've got a bolognese, a white sauce, a tomato sauce, we've got a pesto. Uh, we have signage, so we try and turn it into a challenge. We want them to eat 100 grams worth of pasta, which gives them the energy for the next day. Also, with the stuff we get them to take home. And to be fair, you know, we have a couple now. We've got a, a creamy Coleman. So guys just come up to me and say, I'll have a Coleman, please. And then I know what it is. They know they made it when they've got a pasta and sort of named after them. So. <laughs> Neil, what is your role then? Like, what's your in, in this yeah, operation? Sous chef. How long have you been here? Uh, I started in December. Oh, okay, so yeah. fairly new. New to it, but to be fair, Neil helps me out around here. And he, again, it's about building that bond with the players. And, you know, Neil's had a good bit of exposure to them. They now trust him. And between us both, we provide the food sort of every day. So, again, he's teaching Neil these new things. He worked at a prep company before, so still serving athletes and stuff, but it was sort of quite a different format. So it wasn't in, it wasn't like football background. You, no, it was yeah. more. I'd say it was more sports team rugby. Right, okay. but it was more the base where I was working and stuff like that. It was all to do with nutrition, so it was all right. Oh, yeah. So this is just like a, it's a different, it's a different model really. So it's have nice. you enjoyed the transition? I have, yeah. It was, it wasn't that hard to get used to really. Yeah. But obviously, it's because the old lads, big names and stuff like that. It's just as long as you're normal, and that's, that's yeah. how it's got to be. I worked in, in London, yeah, in basically for a law firm and uh, financial services. So I used to do like the fine dining for bankers, lawyers, if they're having meetings, little finger buffets, canopies. You know, I've been doing it nine years now in the Premier League. So things have improved. Nutritionists have, have learned so much more and that's feeding now through with the chef. So if you're a good enough chef and you're willing to learn and willing to sort of adapt, I guess, um, you know, you'll go a long way really. Uh, did I hear right that you're involved in England? Yeah, so I've worked for England now just under two years. So I got a phone call uh, one time asking me if I can go to Poland for a Euro, uh, no, World Cup qualifier it was. So they've heard about what I do, obviously Jordan and a few players, you know, been in the England squad throughout the years and sort of, I think they've said that how, how good the food is and, and a, well, maybe a bit about me. And they phoned me up and asked me if I could do them a favour. Since then, I've been to the World Cup with them. I've done every international camp, and yeah, it, it, you know it's great that the the stuff we do on a day-to-day -day basis has been, you know, noticed at international level. And and to be fair, a, a lot of the stuff I do is exactly the same as what we do here. So the sort of template we set here is good enough for the, the England squad. And I think it makes Jordan quite proud as well because he's like, this is what we have all the time. This is our chef, you know. So it, it's great that. You know, you can make one of the players proud that you know you work with every day. So yeah, he looks after me a little bit, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's my backer out there. So obviously, whilst we're around here, the academy we're serving up to about 200 meals. So it's we've got another team of chefs through there as well. We serve the under 21s, the under 18s, um, the women's team the under 15s today, the under 16s, and then staff. So we're literally a seven day a week operation, breakfast till dinner, basically. If, so it's, if it's a full house, how many covers is it? Or I think about up to 500 covers a day wow. on, a, on a busy day. 
and plus we have media in, we have, we have to serve the press conferences. It's, uh, yeah, it's non-stop. Do it now, mate. You have a little bit of spice in there as well, Stan. Yeah, totally. Please. Please. These are the hungriest men at the club, these people. The thing is all about them. <laughs> you're oh, you're going to hammer me, are you? Chef on camera! <laughs> what are you doing? Is that why you've got a trim? Is that why you've got a trim? Is that why you've got a trim? Proven. Usual. Hello. Hi, lad. You're going to usual, yeah? Yes, please. A bit cheap, but it's fine. No problem. Are you going straight away, yeah, or are you eating this first? Yeah, I'll give, I'll give you this now, then. Just me, Jimmy. Uh, he's in that bowl there. Oh, okay. Oh, bro. Oh, Yeri. Michael, Crystal, there you go. I see the variety of different meals I've done already with the first, you know, everyone has their own little different thing added to it. So if you if you just do a tomato pasta, a pesto pasta, people then. Oh, here he is. Oh, what's this? Just telling him about your Coleman dish. Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't call it, I didn't press it at the goal. See, Seamus is so humble, he doesn't, you know, don't even want it called the Coleman. And actually, Jack Grealish has a Coleman. He doesn't know it, but he has a Coleman with England. The choice of food we have here is one of the biggest in the Premier League, I believe, from what I've been told. But we see it as, you know, we've got loads of different players from all around the world. They all have different eating habits. They, they all like different things. So that every day, if we have a sort of a spread like this, there's something for everyone. Last week in Manchester, up at four o'clock in the morning to feed Amadou and Ghana. They're obviously they were, um, on Ramadan, so we had to feed them their full pre-match meal basically at four in the morning, which is interesting. So again, I've got to then get into their hotel kitchen at 4 a.m. No one else is there. Like, what are you doing in here, chef? Like, knocking up some eggs and they had some pancakes and porridge, stuff like that. Obviously, that's their fuel that's got to last them all day basically. So they come at some. Big time, aren't I? Is How much time? Not bad, I'm not too late. And I have uh, my evening uh, usual. Place. Yes. Uh, chicken based. No problem. It's like oh, no, 12 for the morning. Yeah, yeah. So Jump it. I'll put this extra bit in there if you've got two for tonight. Yeah, what's the two pass uh, Four cheese tortellini. This is for them to take home to keep topping up them carbohydrates. Basically, it's energy for tomorrow. So instead of going home and maybe even having a piece of fruit, you're actually having a high carb piece of banana loaf, really. So it's, uh, and also they enjoy it. You know, it is like a piece of cake, but it's, it's a modified recipe that we've worked hard over time to make it perfect that it contains low sugar, obviously, it contains fruit and it contains high carbohydrates. So perfect for them just to top up. What happens after after shaving time? Uh, pack up. So so today, for instance, this will be sort of cleaned down. I'll then start my prep for after the game tomorrow. So I've got to take the food over to the stadium. The manager have a bit of food in his in the dressing room before the game. They have a couple of pre-match meals at the stadium. Um, they'll have again the the uh, banana loaf that we made earlier. I'll go and cut that up there. Um, fruit platters, stuff like that. So stuff. People are just topping up then, so that's a mad thing about the game. Like, obviously, I'm in the kitchen during the game, so most of the time I can't even hear what's going on. So I'm like, I watch the sort of first half an hour in the dressing room or the the players' lounge, and after that I'm in the kitchen. So 
can sometimes hear like a bit of screaming going on, or you certainly don't hear when the the opposition score. So, you know, over the years, I've I've missed a lot of like, you know, even even against Palace last year, I didn't even know that was happening on the pitch. <laughs> I had no idea. Like, you know, obviously I knew we we scored the, uh, Dominic scored the winner, but I had no idea about the scenes or anything like that. I was I'm still cutting up pizza and and making little mini burgers. So I had no idea. So every, everyone was saying it's the best day of their life. For me, it was just a normal day in the kitchen. <laughs> So the game's being played out there. Um, I'm going down, putting the cold food into the dress room. So we've got uh, fruit pots, we've got sushi, we've got yogurt pots, and that's for them to sort of graze on as soon as they get in the dressing room. We've had some um, the banana loaf that we saw at the training ground yesterday. They've just finished that off. So pre-game, these are just little fruit pots. They come in and they might just grab one of these and just sort of snack on it really. So we put those out. They can just take an individual one. Some of them even sit in the ice bath eating fruit or eating a yogurt. And you know, it's just easy little bits and bobs just to, to graze on while the, you know, the manager's talking or they might be having a little um, debrief amongst themselves. This is just a granola, honey and um, Greek yogurt. So it's, it's high in protein, it's a thick Greek yogurt basically. And these go in the manager's office and the um, in the referees room as well so they feed the referees after the game as well no matter what decisions they make we've still got to be professional and feed them so i was gonna ask <laughs> so you've got little sushi uh, trays and again these are high in carbs for these high in carb high in protein and these just help the lads just little bite-sized piece sort of starts their recovery off really some can't eat after a game some eat loads so who eats Just the most? Um, do you know what? It, it's all result driven. Some of them really sort of punish themselves a bit. And also, it depends on how well they've played. If, if we win, they eat loads and it's great. If we lose, they're a bit, you know, they sort of sit there and reflect a bit more and they're not really wanting to eat. When it's hot as well, um, they don't tend to eat as much. They take a lot more fluid on board. We do a sort of a glorified sort of junk food spread in the in the dress room, and all it does is it gives us control on on junk food basically. So we give them a burger, but our butcher makes them. They're, they're fresh burgers um, in a bun, a little bit of cheese, a little bit of ketchup. So you know we want them to be eating high protein, high carbohydrates. So us delivering that burger to them, where we know we've got control on, it's better than them getting a burger on the way home. Our chicken wraps. Uh, these are the lads' favourites, to be honest. They go wild for these, but which is perfect for after the game. Obviously, the wraps high in carbs, and then we use a southern fried chicken. So usually, all week they'll be on sort of grilled chicken breasts. We use a southern fried, but we oven bake it, so um, it's not actually fried. So it's it's again, it's a it's a little cheap, but it's con a controlled sort of cheap meal. So. Generally in, in football you will get pizza in most dressing rooms. So that's a Chorizo pizza. Base is all from the training ground, so again we just cook them at high temperature. Again we've controlled the cheese, we put them on ourselves. Obviously a bit of fat from the Chorizo. And then again to the players, instead of going home and getting a Domino's or, or whatever they may get, they're sort of satisfied with, with what they've had. I'm just going to take it down to the dressing room now and the lads can get stuck in.